Hey guys! Uh, we're fresh off the sweetness of that normal ending, so now it's time to see what kind of sweetness the best ending's supposed to get us. So I'm just gonna start from the beginning of his route. I'm pretty sure this is the, the divergence. Um, and so we'll just pick all the opposite uh, choices we did the first time, and hopefully that will lead us to the best ending. Because the choices we made went to the normal, so the opposite should lead to best is the hope, anyway. So let's see if that works out. So the first time was we were dusty while he was still such a stubborn teddy bear. We hadn't broken through very much to him yet. And uh, the first time we helped him, which he was not very happy about. So this time we're just going to leave him alone and give him his space. Though the urge to help was strong, I continued to sweep my own spot. Given Royal's attitude, I'd just, be, I'd just get brushed off with some snide remark. I've had enough of those to last me the week. Amidst my sulking, I heard a creaking sound and looked back behind me. Somehow a stack of hardcore... Uh, hard... That's a hardcore books falling! <laughs> Hardcover books had been dislodged, and together they teetered towards where Royal had jumped down to the floor. Oh no, are we going to save him this time? My heart twisted in fear. Look out! I instinctively threw myself over Royal, shielding the small bear against the onslaught of books. The uh, ironic thing is, he wouldn't have felt any of that because he's a toy, but maybe he'll appreciate it. Pain exploded across my back and limbs with every hit, because I'm not a toy. Oh, we got a new picture! We saved him! Ah! My heart. You, you. And here I thought I was the clumsy one. I managed a small smile despite the excruciating pain coursing through my body. He just stared evenly as my vision blurred and the room tilted sideways. I managed one last sharp, painful breath. Wow, how heavy were those books that they knocked the wind out of you? Now, we're even. And then everything went dark. Mother? Mother? Is that you? Keep this for me, Mora, until the day you meet that person. I held out my hand to accept a rusty broken locket. It looked like it might have been beautiful once, beneath the damage that had gathered over the years. Who is this person you're talking about? Mother didn't answer my question. My heart ached. The once vibrant mother I knew now looked pale and weak. Her illness is already taking a toll on her body. A single tear rolled out of her eyes, smiling warmly before fading into the light around me. I'm sorry. Mother, wait! I bolted upright, setting off a kaleidoscope of pain over my body. A dull thro throb started at the base of my skull and spread outwards. Aw, she woke up crying. Ow. You should lie down for a while. Beside me, Royal sat with a solemn expression on his face, one that we rarely saw. We were still in the library, on the floor where the books had fallen, but I noticed the books were all gone. Aw. I wondered how long I'd been unconscious. How... Are you feeling? I intended to be sarcastic, saying I felt like I'd been hit by a ton of books. Hey, you had an opportunity to use it, girl. But when I reached out to touch my head, I noticed the blanket royal must have draped over me. Alright, he's still getting me with that sugar. So I chose something neutral instead. My head hurts. But I'll live. He sighed, but it wasn't that same exhale of exasperation I'd become used to hearing. It sounded both relieved yet unhappy. You really are an idiot. You shouldn't have done that. Even his voice wasn't prickly and angry like usual. I was suddenly worried that I might have gotten hit in the head too hard, and maybe this was really a dream. I felt a sharp pang in my chest. Nope, the pain was real. But then... You'd be the one who would have gotten hurt. 
Shrugging his shoulders, Rel cast me a listless expression, one that didn't suit him at all. I've already told you before. I'm a toy, not a human. I don't feel pain anymore. As his voice lost strength and his body slumped against the bookshelf, I felt a surge of emotion rush through me. Don't say that! I bent towards Royal and scowled at him, and for the first time, he seemed surprised. I'm loving all these new bear expressions. You may have the body of a toy, but your mind and soul is that of a human. Don't just throw away your humanity like that. For a moment, Royal said nothing, his sad face looking back at me with uncertain curiosity. I suspected that there was vulnerability beneath his thorns, and I couldn't help wondering what caused Royal to doubt himself so much. Then, all at once, as if our conversation never happened, Royal shook his head with his typical sigh. Oh, you're one weird girl. Yeah, everybody keeps telling me that. A smile tugged at my mouth. I never thought I'd be happy to hear his exasperated self again. So I'm told. Getting to his feet, Royal reached out as if to touch my head, but then he retreated and crossed his arms. Don't pull another stunt like that. Got it. Though he'd returned to chastising me, his voice was softer than usual. It made my cheeks warmed at the thought. Ah. I'll try. Can you stand? Yes. His whole body relaxed as he nodded with approval. Ah. You'd better go back to your room and rest that head of yours. Just when I thought we'd make a we made a breakthrough, Royal added to his statement brow furrowing into a mild glare. Best check you don't have any more loose screws. With that, things were back to normal. That was a pretty good tease, though. He wasn't angry when he said it. Still, I didn't have any complaints after seeing Royal so listless before. I wanted to worry about him some more, but my head started to pound. I decided to leave things for now. As I got to my feet and headed towards the door, I heard a hushed voice behind me. Wow! What a scene <laughs> that we missed. Thank you. Huh? Royal didn't meet my gaze, instead turning to gather up his cleaning implements and continue working. Nothing. <laughs> Baka. Ah, that's so cute! Alright, let's skip to our next choice. All right. We were very rude to her in our dream last time, so this time we will take her hand. Unable to explain the calm I felt, I reached towards her. The soft smile on her lips was as warm as her hand. Who are you? What do you think you're doing? My eyes flicked open at the gruff demand, the familiar but incensed voice breaking through my reverie. It seemed I had been asleep, but as my sight adjusted through the haze, I only saw unfamiliar surroundings in the dim light. So we weren't going to hit her this time. Okay. I can see why that would be a more of a positive affection on, uh, on Royal's side towards us. After a few turns of my head, I looked forward, still in a kneeling position. Sitting in the velvet settee was a beautiful porcelain doll, her hair like spun gold. My breath caught in my throat. Not only was I holding the doll's small hand, it felt impossibly warm. Oh, we actually took her hand. Wh what Blue eyes shone within the moonlight. Her paint, her faint, paint fink? Good grief. Mouth, brain, get your act together. Her faint pink lips were curved into a sweet smile. But the longer I looked at her, the more I saw a whisper of sadness behind that happy facade. There was something uncomfortably real about her. I didn't get to dwell on it for long, however, before Royal's voice came after me again. You. What are you doing here? The icy chill in his raised voice finally dragged me away from my thoughts. I blinked, looking again at how I was kneeling before a beautiful doll, my fingers gently holding onto her hand. Wait, what? Failing to produce an answer, I looked over at Royal with a half-panicked, half-angry expression. 
The thing was, I didn't know what I was doing here either. It must have been a dream, so maybe I had sleepwalked to her. But that sounded too silly to admit to Royal. He remained quite unimpressed. It had been a while since his glare was that frozen. It's the middle of the night. What are you doing in her room? What are you doing in her room? Forehead furrowed with suspicion, Royal crossed his arms and advanced towards me. More importantly, how did you know where she is? I glanced about the unfamiliar room, only just coming to the conclusion I'd somehow wandered the halls and ended up in such a special room. Thinking back to previous conversations, I recalled the toys commiserating that only the young heiress remained lifeless, even though she'd become a toy too. This is Goldilocks? Aura! My eyes widened and I shivered as that young girl's voice from my dream called out to me again. Warmth swelled at my chest and a bright light shone through where our fingers connected. I stood in a panic, the light spreading to my chest. But whether it was from kneeling for so long or from fear, my legs buckled. The light swallowed up the room as I felt my body collapse. Oh, Ow! I fully expected to hit the ground, so I was no doubt startled when my body hurt less than it should have. To add to my confusion, it was harder to breathe. Something heavy pressed down on my chest. <gasps> this beautiful boy! I looked upwards. My entire body froze at the sight of silver eyes and a handsome face glaring down at me. His dark hair dangled between us like icicles. I didn't know where he had come from, especially when there had been no one in the mansion besides myself and the toys for weeks. <sighs> His glare felt so familiar. I tried to stutter out some kind of response, but a gruff, impatient growl cut me off. <laughs> this is a much better transformation scene. I'm loving it. What did you do, you idiot? I... Though the urge to defend myself against his fury was strong, both curiosity and fear took over my senses. Blinking, I changed the subject. Wait, who are you, anyway? The guy's brow furrowed, his silver eyes gl glinting. <laughs> With a snort, he leaned closer as if trying to examine my face for clarification. Did you hit your head or something? Again. Heat flooded my face as the distance between us shrunk even more. Too close. I knew he was kneeling over me, but only now did the intimacy factor strike me at full force. <laughs> oh, I stop. I'm not covered. Kya! Pervert! Kicked him right in the nadgers. Thrusting my hands upward, I knocked the stranger off of me. He landed on the carpet with a thump, and I immediately shuffled backwards until I hit the wall. A low growl spilled into the air as the guy lifted himself into a seated position. His growl evolved to a snarl. <sighs> what was that all about, you stupid girl? The familiarity of his voice, those insults, the memories of a teddy bear filling my senses. I started to tremble at the knowledge I'd gained. Only one person... Uh, Toy calls me that, and that's... Ugh. Thrusting my finger forward, I tried to yell, but the shock warped my words instead. Y you're r r royal His half-lidded stare revealed a flicker of amusement before he descended back into looking like I had ruined his dinner. I am. What is wrong with you? Forgot how to talk properly. I could only stare with my mouth agape and my heart pounding in my chest. Strangely, it wasn't Royal being human that surprised me as much as his actual appearance. With his gloomy and grumpy attitude, I had completely expected something... different. Not anything like this handsome fella! Look at this guy! You're acting really stupid right now. Why are you so surprised anyway? It's not like I magically transformed into... <laughs> and suddenly everybody else was here. Man, we had way more time to ourselves in that transformation scene. Love it. Let's skip ahead. This might take us two videos to go through all these choices, because these scenes are so much longer. 
I'm okay with that. Give me more stuff. That is quite all right. Ah, uh, this one. Which I'm not sure if I might have done the best one by saying and listening last time. But I, I felt like he needed to be left alone. So I'm going to leave him alone this time. Regardless of whether which choice was the right one or not. The writer one. I shook my head. Royal and I weren't even on good terms in the first place. Besides, if he found out I was spying on him, there wasn't a single thing I could say to convince him that I was just concerned for him instead of being nosy. Turning around, I slipped out to the hallway and started towards my room. I didn't know what time it was, but I suddenly realized how tired I felt, wanting nothing more but to bury under the covers until noon. As my footsteps echoed throughout the lonely rooms, I glanced back down the path I'd come from and silently wished Royal a good night's sleep. I hope that he'll be able to get what he wishes for soon. Okay, that was a much shorter scene, so maybe that was a normal end choice. But we should still be okay. I kind of like that we just left him with gold for that night. So let's skip again. Well, you can't get them all right. We've gotten some choice scenes already. I can't wait for this one. I really wanted to glare when this had happened. Let's glare. Don't be shy, girl. Be assertive. <laughs> mm. Pursing my lips in a frown, I glared at Royal. He frowned right back at me, annoyance gleaming in his eyes. What are you glaring at me for? I tilted my head to the side as if observing Royal from a different angle. Then I tried to mimic his usual sarcastic tone. You know, you'd be more handsome if you wiped off that gloomy expression. Flinching, Royal pulled his face away from mine. You think I'm- you think I'm handsome? Shut up. He looked away, glowering at a bookcase across the room. Even from his profile, a pink glow was evident on his cheeks. I was surprised I'd gotten a reaction out of him. I knew it! You do get flustered! As if a switch had been flipped, Royal turned back to me with a chilled, half-lidded stare. I'm letting you go now. I blanched, unable to catch myself or be prepared for that reaction. Wait! Oh! Why? Pain shot up my tailbone as I landed disgracefully upon the hardwood. Tears prickled against my eyelids. Good job, man. She gave you a compliment, and now you hurt her. Ow! Royal! I glared up at him, but he pointedly avoided my gaze. He made a show of fussing with his gloves, like he always does. But I didn't see any purpose to it, because they looked perfectly fine to me. Though it was hard to see his face from my angle on the floor, I would bet money that he was still blushing. We're done here. You should go and help Lily with the laundry now. Before I could protest his decision, Royal strode from the room, grabbing his cleaning supplies without a break in motion. He didn't look back. For a minute or so, I just sat there, nursing my bruised derriere and thinking how Royal could be so mean. Yet, it was so hard to stay mad at him when I remembered how cute he looked when he blushed. Darn that handsome boy. So Lily's gonna tell us all about the details. Well, we might actually finish this in one video. It depends how many longer scenes we've got. No matter what, I'm just here to enjoy all these extra stuff that we didn't get the first time. Us saving him from those books has been the highlight, regardless. All right, Dion. You showed me the way. Let me tickle him. Before I could make a decision, Dion gave me an impatient shove and sent me stumbling towards Royal. An idea suddenly came to me as I tottered closer. I reached out towards Royal's side, trying to tickle him just as Dion did to me earlier. Hiya! <laughs> Instead of laughing, Royal went bored stiff, letting out a gasp. <gasps> 
He twisted back towards me with his face scrunched in surprise. To my disappointment, no smile greeted me. What do you think you're doing? Uh... I murmured incoherently. My fingers still bent in the tickling pose on this ribcage. And where do you think you're touching, you perverted girl? It was my turn to freeze. I glanced down at my hands and immediately scampered backwards. Whoa, I didn't touch any butt. I was tickling you, you idiot. Royal turned back towards me, eyebrow quirked in a perfect arch. Really? It seemed like sexual harassment to me. My plan had failed abysmally. Royal wasn't smiling, but his expression had my heart beating unbearably fast. There was a familiar teasing glint in his eyes. It's not! Dion sauntered up from behind and slung an arm over my shoulders like he does. He was shaking with laughter. Of course, I knew he would enjoy that. <laughs> Sayora, seems like you need practice. How about trying your tickling techniques on me instead? Eh? I stared at Dion with wide eyes, not sure I heard him right. Before I could think of an answer, though, I felt a hand wrap around mine. Like hell she would. I flinched, surprised by the volume of Royal's voice. He shot me a glance. Let's go. Not waiting for a reply, Royal held onto my hand and dragged me down the hall with him from the real sexual harassment. I glanced back just in time to see Dion give us a small wave. You can thank me later. We stumbled down another hall before I looked back at Royal with concern. R royal Where are we going? We turned into a third hallway before Royal stopped and faced me. If he touches even a single strand of your hair, I'll make him pay. I froze at Royal's sudden and unexpected comment. As my brain registered his words, a blush spread over my cheeks. Still sulking, Royal pulled my hand closer. If he ever does something stupid again, come tell me. Understood? You... are you worried about me? There was a moment of silence before Royal flushed a dark red, as if the logical interpretation of his words finally hit him. No, I'm not. I couldn't stop my smile from spreading. Despite the usual gruffness to his voice, there was a tenderness in his expression that caused my heart to beat faster. I'm so glad. I thought you hated me. Ah! My heart! Ah! These words! These gestures, I can't. I'm melting all over again. I'm just a big puddle. I need a bucket to contain me and my feelings. I could never hate you. My eyes widened. I couldn't believe what I just heard him whisper. What? Nothing. <clears throat> he glanced down, his face red all the way to his ears. As of noticing for the first time that my hand wasn't his, Royal quickly let go and made a performance of adjusting his gloves, like he does. My heart, however, would never forget the words he had spoken. Now, care to explain what that was all about? Okay, so we're gonna have our, our old convo again. <laughs> Whew. Oh, interesting. So, we answered this question a little bit differently. Why do you want me to smile so badly anyway? Because I want you to stop feeling guilty over what happened. Realizing what I just said, I slapped my hands over my mouth. But it was too late. The words had already escaped. Ugh. Ah! <laughs> oh no, I'm a sucker for these. Where he, the guy's over the girl like this. Ugh. Getting Travis feels from Rhea Alistair all over again. You... you eavesdropped on me. Oh, so this would have been totally different if we... if he had found us. Interesting. Okay, so leaving him alone, even though it was shorter, was probably the right thing to do. <clears throat> I froze when his arm shot forward, his body trapping me to the wall. I hadn't seen such intensity in his eyes before. I... 
I'm sorry. I didn't mean to... He punched the wall. It did not land anywhere near me, but for the first time I was truly scared of him. How irritating. I've been trying my best to tolerate your idiotic behavior, but it seems my patience has run out. We were better off isolated from the rest of the world, but now everything is complicated because of you. The low growl in his voice was frightening, matching the cold fury in his eyes. His words stung, as though he'd stuck a knife in my chest. You've brought nothing but trouble for us. I tried to stay calm, but his words were so hurtful. All this time, I hadn't thought Royal saw me as someone unpleasant. Suddenly, I doubted the rare kindness he did show me. Tears blurred my vision. But what irks me the most is your optimism. Stop acting like everything will be solved simply by believing. Blinking back tears, I lifted my head and challenged Royal with the toughest expression I could manage. But deep down, all I wanted to do was curl into a ball and cry. It wasn't a bad thing to wish for happiness for him and everyone else, and I wasn't going to apologize for it. You said that believing won't solve anything. Yet, you still believe that gold will one day turn back to human, don't you? Royal flinched, gray eyes wide as I revealed his true feelings. I knew Royal wanted to be as optimistic as I was, but he was too afraid of disappointment. I know that you're always going to her room, waiting for her return. But you know what? You're not the only person who's waiting for her. Sol, Dion, Lily, and Miss Maria are too. Royal bit his lip, contemplating his response. I didn't wait for him to speak. We're all powerless against this curse, but they... No, we still continue to believe that one day, everything will turn back to normal. Still, Royal didn't speak. He only stared at me with cold, hesitant eyes. Soon, the contour of his face blurred completely, and I realized that the tears I'd been trying to hold back were flowing down my cheeks. Oh, I have to stop crying. But no matter how hard I willed them to stop, the tears continued as more words tumbled out of my mouth. Do you know how hard it is to wait for someone who will never come back? For me, it was my father, then my mother. She left me during the time I needed her the most. Do you know how long I waited for her to return? How long I've deceived myself, hoping that she had just gone somewhere far away and would return to me again one day? Except she never came back. But you... There's still hope that gold will turn back. That's why... That's why... I choked on my words, sobbing. All the feelings that I'd locked inside were spilling out of my locked heart. I'd been struggling so hard to pretend that I was strong, that I can move on without her. But I was wrong. I stumbled in surprise when Royal suddenly pulled me against him, his arms wrapping around me. Ah! I'm gonna cry. Ugh, the tears are at the corner of my eyes. It's too much. Shh. I'm sorry. He squeezed me tighter. I'm sorry. You aren't the one at fault. I was mad at you for no reason. The truth is, I have been angry at myself since this curse began. I closed my eyes, enveloped in his warmth. I cried even harder. Eve eventually, I pulled away so I could look him in the eyes. You always have such a gloomy aura, as if you carry all the weight in the world. I don't know the burden you're carrying, but remember that you're not alone. You can lean on others every once in a while too, you know? That's what we're here for. Royal looked deep into my eyes. His pained expression was filled with shame and regret. How can I do that when this curse is my fault? My jaw dropped at his confession. Royal, what are you... Just when I thought that Royal had finally lowered his defenses and decided to confide in me, his expression stiffened, now rigid and cold. 
It was as though he reverted back to his old self. Sorry. I need to clear my head for a bit. With that, he turned to leave, not giving me a chance to respond. I stayed where I was, staring at Royal's retreating figure. My mind whirled, still confused by his admission, amongst other things. What did he mean by that? 